Hey, my name is Ash T, and on today's episode of The Dropouts, I have my twin, not my physical <laughs> twin, but uh, someone who was also a doctor, but not only a doctor, a pathologist, just like I was, who also quit to become an actor. So thank you, Jackie Dallas, for coming on board the show. Thank you for having me, and it's so good to meet someone else like me. <laughs> like, I know, like, like I was telling you, I saw your profile and we auditioned, I was like, what? There's another pathologist that became an actor? No way. She's got to come on this yeah. podcast. We're a rare breed. We are. Did you grow <laughs> up in California? No, um, I'm actually originally from the East Coast. Oh. So I grew up in Florida, spent most of my adult life in New York. And then bounced around a lot, lived in the Caribbean, lived in Chicago, lived in San Francisco, and now I'm in L.A. Okay, but in Florida, mm -hmm. you were born to your parents who did what? Were they in the medical field? Yes. Okay. Um, everyone in my family is in medicine. So my dad was a family practitioner. My mom was a pediatrician. Mm. My sister went into OB-GYN. My uh, older, uh, my the oldest, the next oldest cousin went into medicine. My uncle's an interventional radiologist. Oh my God. I think I have some oncologists and more radiologists on like the more distant ends of the family. It's so. a cycle for you. It's what I grew up with. Yeah. I didn't know any different. <laughs> so when you're growing up, did you have any dreams as a child where you're like, I want to be a doctor just like my parents or did um, something else come up? I would say I suffered from kind of like occupational ADD as a child. So mm. when I grew up, I wanted to be everything. I think a lot of kids grow up with that sense of direction. Like I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a police officer. And for me, I just couldn't decide. Like um, what I wanted to be when I grew up was a flavor of the week for me. So being an actor uh, was something that always appealed to me, I would say. You get to be everything. You yeah. get to do everything. Uh, every day is different. Every project, every role. And that was really, really appealing to me. But I never believed, or I never thought that acting could be a real career. In Florida, in a small town, it's like the most you could be an actor was high school drama class, mm. maybe a community theater, you know, children's summer camp. Did you uh, believe that, or did someone tell you that you're not going to be able to be an actor? Oh, it wasn't funny? that they told me I couldn't be an actor initially, right? Yeah. It's just that nobody... I don't know, com coming from Florida, like a small beach town in Florida, yeah. it was, um, it's such a land of, ho Hollywood is such a fantasy land, right? It's something you see on TV. It's like mm -hmm. they propel you into these different worlds, these different universes, and you just have no idea how to even approach that. You have to be born into it or super rich or super beautiful or, you know, this unattainable um so you saw the, the data. Of talent. I'm sorry? You saw the data. The the, the data. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, it's an odds game. It's a, I don't know, it's also just a complete lack of familiarity growing up with it. Whereas medicine, I was surrounded by. So it was no longer um, scary or daunting or, you know, I felt like I had a good grasp of that even as a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got to see my parents go all the way through um, from the residency process to starting their own practice, um, oh, okay. you know, the whole the whole path there. Right. <laughs> I think uh, I remember bringing my shoes down to my dad as he would go to the hospital like at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it yeah. was just kind of understood that I was going to be a doctor, you know, as far back mm -hmm. as like seven or eight. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I just have to make straight A's to become a doctor. Exactly. Was it, was it like that for you? Did you have yeah. to make good grades or what was I had, I had excellent grades yeah. <laughs> did you want to have excellent um, grades or did you want to it you know I at the risk of sounding like a total snot here it was it I feel like academics was a very natural path for me maybe I was bred that way mm -hmm. um what my, is your ethnicity Korean uh, Korean yeah so I, Korean families are very much academic oriented very right? academic oriented and you know, I was very blessed in the sense that my mother was very intelligent. She graduated top of her class. Um, even in Korea, she was like top of the class amongst all the other very intelligent, very driven, very ambitious, uh, you know, med students there. So I got my mother's genes, which I'm very grateful for. And then there's kind of this running joke in my family that my father is just very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he's also very smart, you know, love you, dad. But he's very lucky. He always finds himself in the right place at the right time, meeting the right people. And um, I think a combination of that just allowed me to kind of succeed in that path. It's not so much that 
Well, I wouldn't say that I didn't want to, but I wouldn't say I wanted to either. For me, it was kind of this natural next step that I never even questioned. Uh, might be similar to what you were saying. It's like when you when you finish elementary school, what do you do? You go to middle school. Yeah. After middle school, what do you do? You go to high school. After yeah. high school, what do you do? You go to college. After college, you go to medical school. Like I never even thought otherwise of it. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's just the path. When I enrolled in college, it was a microbiology major, pre-med. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even think twice. I didn't even know there were other options. Liberal arts, what is that? You know. Okay, this makes a lot of sense because when I was in medical school, mm -hmm. um, all the Koreans in my class always <laughs> kicked my ass at every... They were all straight A's and everything. Mm -hmm. They killed anatomy, physiology, and I was like, God, give me a break here, people. <laughs> it's you know there and there's 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 some parts of it that I just like flat out sucked at you mm. know um, anatomy was interesting to me so even though that wasn't the most natural um, I found myself like actually studying that one like um, I would never say I'm happy to study mm. but it wasn't as painful as some of the other subjects like like for me physics was the bane of my existence oh yeah me too I remember in college, um, I kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And finally, senior year, I had to take it to mm. graduate, right? It was a requirement. And the only one left was a 7.30 a.m. course. And I just regretted putting it off so much. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I was yeah. like, I already don't like this topic. Yeah. And now you're forcing me to wake up at 7.30 a.m. In, in college. college. Like, Forget oh, it. it was, yeah, you was really rough. are my twin. That was rough. <laughs> That was rough. <laughs> what happened to me was biochemistry was at 8 a.m. Mm. And you had to go to class. It was required, and I yeah. couldn't make it. So I failed biochemistry because oh, I couldn't make it That's early, rough. So. Was it one of those classrooms, like 500 people in the room? 140. Yeah, and yeah. then they give you like a little clicker thing or yeah. something. See, we schemed. Yes. Every person drew a straw, and it was like, you're the Monday person, you're the oh, Wednesday person, you're the oh. Friday person. So we're all like, and you have like 30 seconds to put in your answer. So we're just like... <laughs> Um, I shouldn't admit Now you that, can say that. But. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're never going back. All right. Six, so when was the first time that you tried out acting? How, how young were you? I was pretty young. I, um, I, was, I, I was never really shy. And so I did probably a black box theater for children. Mm -hmm. I think we had a, a Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or a Snow That's Queen. A you know, like one of those yeah. kids plays um I wasn't very good so I never got any of the lead roles I was I I think I was just like someone who danced in the background or something <laughs> like that but I got tissue elf instead yeah. of Santa <laughs> so. so I think that was my first taste of like being on stage and just yeah. being a part of something and I thought that was really magical and a lot of fun um I had a lot of friends who were also kind of in that same space and mm. uh, they were really talented and they had a great time and I just remember admiring that and looking up to that and being like I want to do that one day but as you get older you know um, reality sets in reality sets in yeah you're totally right so I kept doing you know like high school theater when I got too old for children's uh, acting camp I mm. became a chaperone for it um, I tried to keep it in my life as much as possible yeah you know really awkward talent shows and <laughs> dance performances at yeah i forgot about uh, talent you shows know, like yeah yeah, yeah 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 just whatever stuff like the assembly stuff right. oh gosh cringe hmm okay so good thing for no social media <laughs> i know right <laughs> what uh, school did you end up going to um for college i went to university of gainesville okay in and, florida and did you take uh, any drama classes there i didn't no oh, i not even uh, one. i ended up not really Mm. So medicine, the pre-med track is still pretty grueling. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of oh, uh, <laughs> time and brain power. Yeah. And so I didn't really do any of the acting stuff at that point because I, I don't know, I kind of assimilated myself into this mentality. Like, all right, now it's getting real, right? Now you have to get serious. Now you have to study. Plus I was working as a bartender at the time um, mm. just to make some extra cash. Um, late nights, early mornings don't really mesh too well. Mm -hmm. uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time at the number one party school at the time. <laughs> we won the national championships. Um, we won three of them in two years. So it was a, it was a very fun time to yeah. be in college. Yeah. Um, then I went, to, uh, I went to a Caribbean school for medical school, uh, University of Antigua. Mm -hmm. 
and part of it was because you partied so much in Florida. That was a huge <laughs> part of it. I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie. But also, I felt like at that time I wanted to do medicine on my terms, mm -hmm. and this is totally backwards because knowing what I know now, it's so important to go to a good school. You know, that whole pedigree, what you bring with you, is so important and valued, especially in the world of medicine. So, if I could go, well, if I could go back, I wouldn't change anything. But if I was still looking <laughs> at it from a doctor perspective. I would have said, you know, go to a U.S. school, mm -hmm. go to a, a school with a name or a reputation if you can get into it, because that's just going to make your path in the future so much easier. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I was like, oh, I like bartending. I think I'm going <laughs> to, you know, pull a Tom Cruise cocktail and bartend in the Caribbean and <laughs> study on the beach and learn how to sail. And that's what I did. And I had a wonderful time. But um, see, I, I'm the opposite now yeah. that I because I went to UVA med school, yeah, and I had yeah. to compete with all those people. I'm like, man, I wish I went, <laughs> Stop. yeah, now I wish I went to a school that was a little bit easier. It was, I mean, <laughs> it was take my time. I wouldn't say it was easy still, but mm. at the same time, like, I think it catered to my lifestyle, what I wanted yeah. out of a lifestyle, a little bit more near the beach, you know, yeah, stuff. I could, yeah. I could study at the beach or, or at a bar yeah um i could do things on the weekends that didn't involve a library you know i got to find a balance of of being a student and then you know being a a girl in my early 20s mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and that's four years of med school you're definitely mm -hmm. not doing an act acting here probably absolutely not yeah. no there's just no time for it yeah um i got back into acting when I was in Chicago doing pathology. So I had kind of a, a roundabout course here. So I right after up, the Caribbean, you did something different, right? You right, know? right. So after the Caribbean, um, so the way our school was structured is two years of basic sciences, which is just your text, you test your book work, you know, stuff like that. You could do that anywhere. So that was all in the island. Um, and because it was a U.S. accredited school for clinicals, we would come back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and work in the U.S. hospitals so that we got used to that sort of practice, you know, our, uh, the, the, the protocols and the EMRs and, you know, electronic medical records and all of that. So I started off working in Miami at a few hospitals and then I did a couple of rotations in New York, fell in love with New York mm. and was like, okay, this is where I'm going to stay. I'm going to figure it out. Um, I guess, yeah, New York's a lot different than Florida. It's so different. Yeah. And then, you know, for my personality, like I said, I'm always constantly having to do things and explore and, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, just try and, I don't know, <laughs> do everything. Uh, New York really catered to my personality, the speed of it, the variety of things to do. Um, so staying in New York, I wanted, I decided I wanted to go into surgery. I loved my rotation um something about just the job description of it like gosh you get to like operate on people it's like a little twisted but really exciting yeah. <laughs> i liked the instant gratification of it but, i feel like a, mm -hmm. but while doing that rotation in surgery mm -hmm. all we're doing the third and fourth year is we're just, just holding like, you're just exactly. retracting <laughs> how could you enjoy that <laughs> well okay i mean i could see like in the future like that's so cool yeah. that's what i want to do you know um and seeing just, like I said, the instant gratification results, I felt like a lot of the medicine rotations were, okay, well, it might be this, it might be that, let's get you worked up for this, come mm -hmm. back in six weeks, let's try this medication, see how you feel. It was this prolonged, um, I don't know. You just, just put the Band-Aid on the wound. You never fix anything. You're just not sure, you know? Yeah. Um, and I didn't care a whole lot for that aspect of it. Surgery was like, okay, you come in. I've never met you before, or maybe you have. Uh, figure out what's the problem. Can you fix it? Can you not? If you can't, you know, <laughs> refer yeah. to medicine. Yeah. And if you can fix it, you take them into the OR, you fix it, make sure they're all good, have, you know, just feel like you've walked away from something knowing that you've actually changed something for the better. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, but here's the other problem, mm -hmm. getting up early. That's what made me not no. want to be a surgeon. <laughs> I should have learned from <laughs> physics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getting up 5 a.m., having uh, around yeah. on all those people. Oh, my gosh. You should see me. Like, the first few uh, weeks, I'd be like, okay, let's, you know, let's be presentable. And a few weeks later, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't even care. Yeah. Like, I'm going to wake up five minutes before <laughs> I have to, like, run out the door. Right. Um, waking up early was rough. I think another aspect of that lifestyle that I 
in my head knew but didn't really comprehend was how demanding that lifestyle would be. Mm -hmm. You're literally at the hospital and your patient's beck and call 24-7. It doesn't matter if you're on call or not. If it's someone that you've operated on, you have some sort of a responsibility or an obligation, even if it's your colleague that's going to be kind of taking over whatever post-operative, if it's a complication or something else that happens, they're probably going to call you and say, hey, what happened? What did you do in the OR? Like, what was your technique? Like, how did you close? Um, And I don't know how technical all this conversation is for viewers who didn't go through medical school. I'm sure they're fascinated. But there's a lot of questions that can arise because every person is complicated, Right. right? So... Uh, I don't know. I just remember like constantly working and uh, there were two deciding factors for me as to when I decided to leave surgery specifically. Okay. So you're doing surgery at what place? Did you? Uh, this is the Mount Sinai Hospital Mount Sinai in New York. Mount Sinai for one year. For right? one year. I did okay. my intern year there. All right. Um, and I had done a year of research before that to get into the program. Gotcha. I totally skipped that step. Yeah. Uh, coming from a U.S. or coming from a Caribbean school. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more complicated getting into a good residency program. Mount Sinai was pretty well reputed, and I wanted to do surgery, which is an ambitious field. Okay, so, so this is where our paths diverge because mm-hmm. my third year of school, yeah, I was like, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I yeah. don't like anything. <laughs> I hate every rotation. Yeah. And my fourth year, I was like, oh, but pathology, mm-hmm. it, you get to get up a little bit later, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, you just look up slides. This is great. Yeah. I'll do this. It's as close to a nine to five as yeah. you can get in medicine. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I, I came to that realization a yeah. little later. But um, I was I was very upset the whole time I was there. I was like, I should I should be an actor. Like my whole yeah. life, I was like, I should be an actor. Yeah. <laughs> That's what was going on in my mind. But it sounds like mm-hmm. you probably you were okay being a surgeon and. I feel like I'm a stay the course kind of person uh, when. Much stable, well, more stable. I don't know. I think that contradicts what I said earlier about having life ADD. But I think um, my personality is try to make the best of everything, try to see the positives. My mom said I was like a pathological optimist as a child. <laughs> um, so I think whatever path I set out for, one, I'm like intensely determined to succeed in it. And then two, um, you know, find happiness in it, right? Like I hate waking up and not wanting to wake up, yeah. right? That's such a terrible feeling. Um, so I tried to find what I liked about certain things. How can I attain the goal? It became a challenge. It's almost like the thrill of the chase sort of, a, mm-hmm. you know, mentality. They're like, oh, you can't be a surgeon. You're not a U.S. graduate. You're, 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 um, your med school GPA is not high enough mm. or your MCAT or not MCAT, um, USMLE Boards, scores yeah. were not high enough, you know? And I was like, wait, watch. Yeah, exactly. So um, I did a year of research there, in which case I basically harassed the resident in charge of research to give me like a job. And he was like, we don't really have that position mm. here. I was like, well, I can just come and help. You can not pay me, like, <laughs> in, in, like, not an intern in medicine, but like uh, any other occupation intern. Yeah. He's like, fine, just why don't you come in in one of our meetings and we'll see how it goes. I was like, I can be your little scut monkey. <laughs> I'll just like run data for you. You know, the boring stuff that no one wants to do. I like to do research in the scut work. So. I, I fell in <laughs> love with research. Yeah. I do. I really okay. love it. And that's how I met my future husband. We, we published a lot of papers together. We did a lot of good things. And I think it was because of that. Um, you know, the residency program mm-hmm. at Sinai was like, all right, well, you don't fit our pedigree, but we'll, we'll give you a chance, you know? So I had a lot of imposter syndrome that year. You know, there's a lot As of... As a surgeon? Yeah. In my intern year, mm-hmm. I was working with people who went to John Hopkins, mm-hmm. went to Yale, you know, went to these top institutions that... Yeah everyone recognizes the name of and I was like I went to the Caribbean (laughs) right um so yeah it was a lot of imposter syndrome and then the demands of it was very stressful uh there were two moments one was I couldn't go to one of my best friend's weddings and just couldn't get the weekend off and I was like I don't understand there's four weekends there's like so many of us Mm. why can't I have that one off they're like the schedule's already set it's the inflexibility of it astounded me Mm. it was horrific i was like no this is not acceptable i threw a fit i was so unprofessional but at the end (laughs) of the day i showed up for my shift and i didn't go to the wedding Mm. and it was really rough um the other one was during one of the rotations 
one of my attending doctors had been planning her daughter's uh, bat mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had spent all this time, all this money. All these people were coming. She wasn't on call. And the day of, I think there was some sort of um, emergency surgery that had come in. And she ended up having to just stay hours for it. So she missed her daughter's bat mitzvah after all of that. And I was like... That's not acceptable either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to really um, self-assess whether that was something I was okay with long-term, something I was willing to do, sacrifice that much. And I don't know if that doesn't make me a good person, but I was, I'm was i too selfish for that. I need my time. I need my mental space. Oh, that was the other thing. I was like mentally deteriorating at that point. Did you talk to your parents about any of this stuff? Yeah, you know, it was it was rough. And my parents were like, well, why did you go into surgery? And I was like, because <laughs> Why not I dermatology? I wanted to be better than everyone yeah. else in my family. Um, mm. Well, so at the time, I was like, all right, this isn't going to work. You know, um, going through the whole application process, again, is such a ordeal. Yeah. But um, my boyfriend at the time who would turn into my fiance my husband was like why don't you look into pathology mm. because that's such a cushier job yeah, totally <laughs> right and having the anatomical background of it made it I think that much easier for me to assimilate into that line of um, training so I did that moved from New York to Chicago at UIC hospital and you know got into the pathology program there opposite of you you did clinical pathology right yeah i wanted to do just anatomical <laughs> i was so interested in forensics mm. and um you know the biopsies i i didn't hate it it's a little boring but i didn't hate it um so i did that for three years uh no my mistake i did that for two years mm -hmm. and it was a three-year program and it was the last year that I decided that. Oh, it was only a three-year program there. For, well, oh, because you already AP, finished a year. Right. And then yeah. AP and CP is an extra year to yeah. do both. But if yeah. you're just focusing on one, it's a little, okay, little gotcha. shorter. Yeah. yeah. So three years. You got the end of it. Mm, yeah. I think I was I was uh, trying to find you know the happiness in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's okay. <laughs> but it doesn't stir me. you know. I yeah. didn't wake up every morning thinking like, wow, I'm going to change the world. You yeah. know? It was kind of like snooze <laughs> and that's what I always told myself I wouldn't do you mm. know I always told myself I wasn't going to settle into something that wasn't going to make me happy so had to find something else to do so what happened after that um an opportunity presented itself I I think in some alternate universe there may be a version of me that's still doing pathology mm. and doing acting as a hobby you know on the side but my my husband is uh, he's one academic year uh, or two academic years behind me. Mm -hmm. So when it came time for him to find a residency, he had done his uh, you know sub internships at um, you know U Chicago, Northwestern, and all of those. And he's really smart. He's the smartest man I know. He ended up matching at Stanford. Mm. Um. Thinking, he was like, I didn't think I'd get in. I was like, well, of course you got in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know, once you get into a residency, you're kind of committed. It's like a contract, right? You can't just like, oh, I changed my mind. I'll go over here instead. Where you get in is where you get in. So he was going to California and I was in Chicago. So we had to decide, were we going to prioritize our career at this point in our relationship, we'd been dating for, I think, two two years. Or are we going to prioritize the relationship? Because his program was uh, six years, and then I still had years to go, plus fellowship. And it's like, when you're looking at, we'd already done two years apart because I was in Chicago mm. for two years. Um, are we looking at four years apart, six years apart, seven years apart? Is that viable for a healthy relationship? You know, like, is that going to work? And um, we came to the conclusion, I came to the conclusion that I would move to California. I thought it was a good fork in the road for me in medicine. And I said, you know, if I'm not happy doing this, 
there's a chance I'm not going to do it for the rest of my life. How important is it for me to finish this last year? Oh, okay. So you had one more year left. I had one more year left. And there was no way you could transfer. No, no. I mean, theoretically there is, right? There's the SOAP. Um, I don't even know what that stands for, but it, it wasn't something that I was just weren't willing. passionate about I just, it. Yeah, I just wasn't. I'm trying to be PC about it. Yeah. I just didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So I was like, you know, an MD is always going to be there for me. I don't know what I'll do with it, but it's always going to be there. It's kind of cool to say, hey, I'm a doctor. Um, if I'm going to move to California, why not try something new, right? And California is the land of acting. So I was like, wow, can I actually do this now? Is this something I can um, pursue? Well, how did your parents feel about all this? Surprisingly, I'll give them credit. They were very supportive. Oh, wow. They were very supportive. <laughs> they were probably like pathologists. We don't need any pathologists in the <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I, they, they saw how unhappy I was in surgery. When I chose pathology, they were like, that's a weird personality <laughs> choice for you. You know, they were like, I can't really see you as a pathologist. Um, and they saw I wasn't really happy doing that either. So at the end of the day, I think as much as, pa- as much as Asian parents want their kids to be doctors, like all parents, I think they want their kids to be happy. And so when I told them that I was switching careers, they had their hesitations. They were worried. Uh, they voiced those worries. but um, <laughs> Repeatedly. Over at the you. end of the day, they were like, let's see what happens. You know, uh, medicine probably wasn't the best personality fitted, you know, occupation for me. So explore, see, two years from now, let's, let's touch base. Maybe they're like, it's, it's your fiance's problem now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Get married, (laughs) get on his health insurance before I get unemployed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And that was in 2014, 2013 Mm. around Christmas time is when I told my program I wasn't going to renew. They really tried to talk me out of yeah. it. Everyone thought I was nuts. Um, I probably, will never work in this town again. <laughs> I probably would have thought I was nuts. You know, they're like, you've come so far. You've done so much. You know, you're so close. And logically, you know, it doesn't make any sense to not just finish out the year. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I was being very stubborn. So I didn't renew. Last day, I turned in my badge, turned in my white coat. Um Bought a car because I didn't have a car in Chicago. Mm. You know, it's downtown. And uh, loaded it up with everything I owned. Uh, my sister flew into Chicago and we road tripped the Route 66 all the way to California. And that was like the journey. That was the transition to a new life. The classic Hollywood story. Pack yeah. all your car up with everything. Just throw everything go. in there. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's what had happened. And that was 2014. And you haven't looked back. I haven't looked back. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was uh, naive of me to say, like everyone else I'm sure does, oh, give it a year, give it two years, you know? Because, man, Hollywood takes so much longer than that, you know? Oh, yeah. It takes so much longer than that. But it wasn't that I found success a year or two in. It was that I found happiness. (laughs) You know what I mean? It was like, I can live frugally. I can have a hundred hot side hustles. Um, you know, I was bartending again, I was dog sitting, I was driving for Uber, um, you know, whatever it is that I could to make ends meet. And, uh, and I was okay with that. I was totally okay with that. Because you were pursuing your passion. That's right. That you didn't know about until 2014. (laughs) You're like, this is what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. I did some like student films and things in Chicago just to kind of like test the waters. Oh, okay. So you did have a little bit yeah, of that. Yeah, I had like maybe four months of uh, oh, wow. testing the waters out there. But it was So it was easier scratch. to make the decision. Yeah. Because as far as being that. an actor, yeah, right. Because exactly. coming to California, I could have been like, oh, maybe I'll just work in a med spa and do Botox, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, acting was uh, reintroduced into my life at the time. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like some of the things that everyone starts out doing are kind of not great. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I think if you can, it's like the worst day on set was still like just as good or better than like my best day in medicine. Right. You know? 
it was that much more fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of mm-hmm. how I felt. Yeah. Um, my path was a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> I decided to finish that last year of pathology. Yeah. Um, I kind of convinced myself that mm-hmm. I love doing research and I was a, you know, research mm-hmm. scholar. So mm-hmm. then, you know, I did my fellowship at NIH and then I went to MD yeah. Anderson Cancer Center. But at that point yeah. it was like, all right, I've achieved everything. And now it's, uh, it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. this, but I'd fooled myself into thinking that I really did enjoy it. Yeah. I feel like medicine is easy to delude yourself into thinking yeah. oh, it's going to get better. The next step is going to be so much cooler. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, med school is like, Oh God, med school, med school is so, bleh. once I get into residency, it'll be so much better. Interior, you're like, Oh my God, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. I'm a senior, when I'm not a junior resident anymore, it'll be great <laughs> when I'm in attending. I think, um, you always tell yourself the next step just to keep yourself going because mm-hmm. you feel, I think there's, I, I think it's natural to feel a little trapped, right? Cause you have invested so much time and energy and money blood, sweat, tears into it, your life, you know, you're going to be 30 by the time you get out of it. Right. right? So at that point, I think it's easy to tell yourself, well, this is tried and true. I'm going to have a good, stable financial life. And, um, why not just stay the course? Yeah. You know? And like I said, in an alternate universe, that might've been me, but the opportunity of, um, you know, the, the, the secret, I don't know. The the twist of fate was my mm-hmm. husband matching at Stanford. Oh yeah, that, that was, was a, what it. That's what it was. That's what it was. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, is there any point in this career because mm-hmm. it's so hard to make it as an actor in Hollywood mm-hmm. where you felt like ah, I wish I just finished that year of residency so I could make some money? Um, I think the first year was really rough. First year was really rough for a variety of reasons. I was in a new place. I'd never been before. Uh, the culture in California is very different from New York. Or Florida mm-hmm. um, I was trying to do this new uh, career path that I knew nothing about I mean even just like how do you f- never mind like how do you get into SAG and how do you find an agent it's like how do you what's a slate you know right. what is a headshot like where's the 101 what is the one <laughs> how do I how do I get past the 101 Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah it was is like a whole nother level of trying to navigate this new life and coming from a place where I was, you know, very, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I felt confident in medicine in the sense that I had done the work. I had done the, um, education, the training for it. I felt confident being with my peers. We could talk the same language moving to California and talking about actors. I was like acting. I was like, I, you could be speaking Greek to me. Mm. You know, I had to learn everything from scratch. And being a personality type that likes to be in control of her situation, yep. it felt so chaotic for me at first. Um, and then, of course, you have to take that humble pie. You can't say, oh, I'm a doctor. You're a dog sitter. <laughs> 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 you know? Right. Going back to bartending, um, which I always loved bartending. Uh, driving for Uber, like I said. And I had like 16 other random side hustles, brand ambassador, the person at the uh, grocery store being like, would you like to sample our cheese, (laughs) right? So having to take that step back while simultaneously watching all of my colleagues from medicine um, graduate, start buying houses, start buying their uh, Lexuses and their Mercedes and having, um, you know, this picturesque, life that they've earned whereas i was like okay i'm just um in my one bedroom apartment with dog six, sitting dog sitting with 16 year old carpet you know <laughs> so it was a it was definitely a step back jokes on them though now ha. so but yeah that, that first year was hard you know the imposter syndrome came back in a whole new way i was like did I just make mm-hmm. literally the stupidest mistake yeah. of my life, yeah. right? Because how can you go back to yeah. that? Um, but that kind of turned into a determination and a challenge. And I assumed the mentality was like, this isn't a hobby. This isn't just a plan B. This is a do or die. Because I walked away from that. I, I have no choice. I have to succeed in this, you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, if... 
going through medicine, medical school and residency mm-hmm. and all that stuff makes you a completely different person. Mm-hmm. You know, it, mm-hmm. um, it really hardens you, your soul. You realize you can really do whatever you want to. Yeah, I think there's a huge part of that that did uh, that I, I attribute my success to. Yeah. You know, the work ethic, the ability to not eat or sleep for days. Yeah. Um, you know, doing, not being afraid to do the homework, to do the research, to prep, right? Um, just be neurotic about like, even auditions, like memorizing the lines. I mean, I was reading that like it was a biochemistry book. <laughs> I was like, no, it was the room, not a room, you know, like the most neurotic little things. Um, the writer's word is all important. Right. You must have everything right. Yeah. Yeah. And then just, you know, trying to, package my like actor portfolio as professionally as I could you know doing research and all the headshots like I started off with like a, a cell phone photo and I was immediately like no this is <laughs> not good enough you know yeah. um, so I think kind of approaching it from that business perspective even though it's a passion a business perspective um, not a dream perspective because also when you get into something in your 30s and you've done a career I think you start to recognize that nobody's there to make your dreams come true Mm -hmm. you know if it's a business and this is a multi-billion dollar business who's going to take a chance on someone who's so green who doesn't even have the basic materials together you know it's like applying for residency all over again yeah so true i was like the whole term fake it till you make it i was like my my packet is going to be like the most professional (laughs) thing like yeah so until you saw mine and then you were like oh Hey, modeled my years. I was like, gosh, I gotta be like him. Yeah. Well, eight years in, and uh, it seems like you're very happy with this new yeah. career as an actress. Yeah. And you've yeah. been on how many TV shows now? Um, a multitude. I, probably a dozen or so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've been very lucky. Um, I've, you know, I, I think uh, I didn't land in LA when I first moved to California. Stanford's in Northern California. Right. So I actually ended up in the Bay Area first, mm. which not knowing anything about acting, did not realize there was a difference between San Francisco and LA. You know, I think a lot of people on the East Coast are like, oh, it's like what, a, a two hour drive? That's what I thought. You know? <laughs> so starting off in the Bay Area, which is a much smaller market, much less actors, um, but a lot of commercials, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. I think I was able to build a good body of work much more easily than I would have if I had started off in LA. Mm -hmm. Because here, everyone is just banging on doors trying to get their foot in. Whereas in the Bay Area, every actor there is like, "Eh, it's a hobby. I do it on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cool if I get an audition. Not everyone, but like the vast majority of them. So you get to see the same people over and over and over again in the audition rooms. You know, you get to set and you work with the same people Mm. over and over and over again and it builds this um kind of a film family you know it it was really nice it was very supportive everyone is happy to share their tips and their secrets and um, their connections and introduce you and bring you on for their projects so uh, i think it was very lucky uh in how that happened because by the time i moved to la i had demo reels i had supporting and lead roles on my resume they were all indie films Mm -hmm. but like i had it you know yeah so it kind of made it seem like i had been working for longer and done bigger things um and then i started making the drive back and forth san francisco to la which was brutal but i didn't have to do it too often because when you're starting out you get an audition maybe what like once every 10 months Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Too bad that it wasn't pandemic days, then you wouldn't have to drive at all. No, that's a whole other thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's like I move here and <laughs> now it doesn't matter exactly. where you live. That's yeah. so funny. No, there's still an advantage to being here. Yeah, I firmly I believe so. that. I think there's still a huge advantage to yeah, being like here. Yeah, like you wouldn't drive here to do a podcast from San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Um, but yeah, I, I, started, I started doing that and, you know, the... The crazy part of me was like, LA is just too hard. At the time, Atlanta was really picking up. Um, So much was filming over there. So I did another impulsive thing. I bought a one-way ticket to Atlanta. Mm. I Airbnb'd for six weeks. And I was like, I'm going to figure out this market. Mm. You know, I kind of 
kind of getting familiar with LA just enough to recognize I'm not ready for LA. Oh, wow. You know, it's like if you're not at least SAG eligible or with one recognizable credit, it's so hard to get an agent, so hard to get in the room, mm -hmm. right? I was getting one audition every 10 months. Like, that's not, I, you know, I, I don't want to spend 10 years before I get a break, right? right? right. So went to Atlanta, um, kind of studied that market for a bit, did background work, did a couple of casting workshops. Mm. Um, every actor that I met, same as San Francisco, I was asking 100 questions. I was being so annoying. <laughs> yeah. But I learned enough, got an agent out there, and um, I actually, even to this day, have booked more work out of the Southeast than I have in L.A. Hmm. Because L.A. is just so competitive. It is. It really is. Mm -hmm. I think I've only booked one thing on the Southeast. but Yeah? Yeah. It's a different market, you yeah. know? Do you have an agent out there? Yeah. Yeah? Who are you with, if you don't mind me asking? Crossbeam Talent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I signed with my very first agent out there. He's mm. based out of New Orleans, actually. And he got me my first job. He's got me a lot of jobs since then. Do you fly of your own um, money to say I'm going to be a I did at hire? first a lot. Uh, I did yeah. at first a lot because that was, that's kind of like your, um, <laughs> that's your negotiation, right? right? You're like, right. I can cost you less money yes. if you hire me. Yeah. So, and at the time for me, like the credit was so much more important than the cash. Absolutely. Right. So I would, yeah, I, I think my first, um, uh, first four or five roles out there were all local hire. I put myself in a hotel, drove uh, my own like rental car or Uber, you know, depending on the situation, my own flights. Um, I, I traveled did that spirit. one time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I'm never doing this. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot. It, it's stressful. Yeah. You know, spirit in a backpack. Yeah. Living, uh, you know. <laughs> living that spirit lifestyle. Oh, yeah. I still fly spirit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um but yeah, I did that a few times. And, and you know what What gets you into trouble doing that, though, which is really stressful, is when there's a date change or, you know, when they mm. move your schedule around. Right, totally. And then you have to buy another ticket or you have to extend your stay. Yeah. That happened to me on uh, NCIS New Orleans oh, when yeah. I did it. They, I was supposed to film on a Monday, so I had to fly in on a Friday to do my wardrobe fitting. And uh, come Monday, they pushed it to Thursday. So I ended up seeing there for like a whole week. Wow. I love New Orleans, but, <laughs> but a week is much. too long yeah. in New Orleans. Yeah. Well, um, for someone that's uh, sitting there in their job mm -hmm. and they're, they're hating life and they want to try this other thing, this creative path, anything, mm -hmm. music, dance, ballet, whatever it is, what uh, advice do you have for them right now? I would say, one, don't, don't, delude yourself into thinking it's too late or it's not possible because um you know at the risk of sounding like overly optimistic like anything is possible clearly um but i will say approach it smart because 99 per 99 of people who pursue something creative do it as a dream as a passion as it should be but it is a business you know do your research understand um, how to get started, what to look for t um, in order to succeed, what 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 uh, the people in charge are looking for, mm -hmm. you know? You're the product. How can you package yourself the most appealing way, the most experienced and professional way? Because that's what people want to work with, right? You want to work with people who are going to take their careers seriously, who are going to show up, um, who are going to still be doing it years from now because it's so hard developing a, a relationship with someone and mm -hmm. then finding out a year later, they're like, all right, peace, right? <laughs> um, you're going to invest a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort starting out. So be prepared, be efficient, have a backup, not a backup plan, have um, a backup financial mm. plan, right? Don't quit your day job just yet. Um, yeah, I, I, there's you have to balance between like, being this reckless, impulsive, creative artist and not being a starving one, mm -hmm. right? Be a, a responsible, um, rent-paying, food-buying adult. <laughs> Unless that's your thing. Unless, Unless that's your thing, yeah. right? That's a whole nother... Unless you like being against the wall, cornered <laughs> against the wall, and you'll right? figure it out. If you want to be the musician yeah. in Venice, then that's, yeah. a, that's a whole nother thing. But um, that would be my advice. Uh, just be smart about it. Um, 
and don't be afraid to pull the trigger one day Mm -hmm. because i know a lot of people who are uh testing the waters lifelong hobbyists or lifelong students you know i know a lot of actors who have made it to la but they can't stop I asked them, I'm like, when are you going to get an agent? You know, you like, you should start submitting now. You know, you've got like student films, you've got, you've got stuff on your resume. Just start. The worst they could say is no. And then you just resubmit like six months from now. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I'm going to do it after I get my next headshots. I'm going to do it after this class. Oh, there's a workshop coming up. There's, you know, there's always a reason to wait, just like anything else in life. Um, There's a day you just got to do it. Pull the trigger on it. Pull the trigger on it, whether it's step one, moving to L.A., step two, quitting your day job, step three, you know, just throwing all your submissions out there and hoping for the best. Um, You got to you got to have faith that lightning is going to strike because Mm -hmm. that's what half this industry is. You know, you do have to do the preparation, but man, so much of it is out of your control. You just got to you just got to whatever is going to happen is going to happen. You know? That's what I think. It's a tough place to be where you always want to be in control, mm. you know, in a previous <laughs> life. And now you're completely out of learning control. Learning to let go. Yeah. You know, learning to let go. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. It was a great yeah. conversation. Thank you for having me.